Okay, folks, welcome back. This is our final. We finally got through it. I promised you before the end of 2020 we would get these trading plans done. All right, so this is price action model number 12. This is a scalping model. It is 20 pips intraday trade model. And like the previous trade plan for model number 11, this is, again, what is considered a bread and butter type model. It's not meant to be a be all end all it's one of those models where there's something to find every single day so it's a bread and butter setup because it's a bread and butter setup it is not going to have a high r multiple attached to it that is not to say that you can't apply like one minute scalping and reduce it down and make it even tighter in terms of risk but as you'll see it's about as low as i want to go with a stop loss um, personally my lowest is about 15 pips but as a mentor, I'm trying to keep you around that 20 pip threshold for stop losses. The reason is uh, it's going to take you decades to get really, really good and precise. And even when you obtain a certain degree of precision, the market is still apt to move beyond, you know, 15 pips or 10 pips or don't ever subscribe to anyone telling you to use a five pip stop loss or a two pip stop loss. Uh, this, I just felt it was needed to be said here because there's a lot of yahoos out there that are taking my content and trying to rebrand it and showing fake trades and fake this and fake that and they're not trading with two pip stop losses because if they could do that they would do it on trading view and record it as it's happening and you don't see that happening all right again it's the ict price action model number 12 it is a 20 pip per trade plan and it's anchored on an intraday scalping model. Like every trading plan, we use the five stages of trade plan development. First is preparation, opportunity discovery, trade planning, trade execution, and trade management. All right, our preparation is going to be noting all medium and high impact events for the markets that you're following. We're going to study the events on the week to come and consider how the current market structure and the calendar events may suggest a specific weekly profile for that week's range. Basically, we're looking at that weekly expansion. Okay, we're trying to find which direction. Now, notice I said direction, not specific price level, not where the weekly close is going to be. We're trading in that inside that weekly bias that would expand more one sided than the other. It doesn't matter if we close on change or even reverse intra week. All we need for a model like this is to know which side is most likely going to expand higher or lower relative to its weekly chart. The very next weekly candle before it even starts trading on Sunday, where is the most likelihood of it moving? Is it moving higher? Or is it moving lower? That's the only thing you need. Preparation. We're going to be determining the IPTA data range of the last 20 trading days. Now, we're not needing or requiring 40 or 60 day look back, only the last 20 trading days. And again, we do not count Sundays. We're going to be noting the highest high and the lowest low in the past 20 trading days. This is your current dealing range. Inside this dealing range, we will look for the next draw on liquidity. Where is price likely to trade to next? Below which old low? Above which old high? We look for a PD array in the direction of the weekly range bias. That's what I just mentioned before going into the preparation stage of this trade plan. In other words, we're looking for most likelihood in terms of it moving and expanding on that weekly candle that's just opened on the next Sunday to come. Is it more likely to trade higher or lower? This is what we'll be using and we're going to be targeting external range liquidity. We anticipate price to move to an order block that has a fair value gap with it. That would support our weekly bias on a day and news release found on the economic calendar for the current or next trading week. 
This volatility injection is what we wait for. This would be a run based on a low resistance liquidity run condition. Opportunity discovery. We look for 20 pip ranges on a 15 minute chart that would enable a run to buy side liquidity when bullish institutional order flow is present or target the sell side liquidity when bearish institutional order flow is present. As you can see here, this is a 15 minute time frame, and the idea is we're gonna be targeting external range liquidity using the kill zones and again, fair value gap with order block. And on a five minute chart, it would look like this. You have your order block, fair value gap, New York session, and running to that 15 minute old high for external range liquidity. Trade planning. When the market is poised to decline, we want to look for a convergence of both manipulation and price opposite to our trade bias at a time the economic calendar suggests a volatility injection will likely unfold. We will short 15 minute premium fair value gaps with bearish order blocks. When the market is poised to rally, we want to look for a convergence of both manipulation and price opposite to our trade bias at a time the economic calendar suggests a volatility injection will likely unfold. We will buy 15 minute discount fair value gaps plus bullish order block setups. So in other words, the order block that we're utilizing, it can occur or form outside the kill zone. But the return to the order block must be inside the kill zone of either New York or London. Okay, let me say that again. The order block can reside or be formed during the time of day that is not classically defined as an ICT kill zone. So in other words, it could be forming between 5 o'clock in the morning and 7 o'clock in the morning New York time. So that would be like in our quiet time. You know, London lunch or, or something like that. We're not anticipating a lot there but we still refer to the price action between those two hours five o'clock and seven o'clock so while that is relatively quiet to us we can refer to order blocks that exist there same way during the time that creates the central bank dealers range uh, that is not a time when we actually try to trade but we can refer to blocks that occur or fair value gaps that occur during that time it's not always the case that it forms, but I'm just throwing this in here as another uh, point of reference. But the return to the fair value gap and the order block, both bearish or bullish relative to our bullish or bearish consideration using this trade plan, the return to the order block and fair value gap, that must, that absolutely must be during an ICT kill zone. Otherwise, it's not a viable trade. Trade executions. When we are bearish, we will anticipate a five minute premium fair value gap coupled with a bearish order block to form on a 15 minute retracement higher. Now, before I go any further, the stage on this is based on that 15 minute time frame. That's your stage. The setup forms on the five minute chart and it must occur during London open and or New York open kill zones. When we are bullish, we will anticipate a five minute discount fair value gap plus bullish order block to form on a 15 minute retracement lower during London open and or New York open kill zones. Short trade management. When we are entering a short, we will place a sell limit order. We will execute with our demo account. We will use the institutional order flow entry drill minus five pips as our entry price when using the sell limit order. When we're entering a long, we will place a buy limit order. We will execute with our demo account. We will use the institutional order flow entry drill plus five pips as our entry price when using the buy limit order. Again, the orders are placed relative to a five minute chart. So your institutional order flow entry drill price level is going to be derived from the five minute. When we're entering a short, 
we will place a sell limit order to take 20 pips as our objective on a single position. If you capture a 20 pip objective, close the order via a buy limit order and wait for another opportunity. When we are entering a long, we will place a buy limit order to take 20 pips as our objective on a single position. If you capture a 20 pip objective, close the order via sell limit order and wait for another opportunity. Long story short, we're entering on a limit and we, as soon as we enter, we have our profit objective in the form of a counter limit and the order sits there. We don't monkey around with it. We don't think about it. We don't obsessively compulsively worry. We put the stop in, we put the limit order in for 20 pips and we let it go. It's either going to stop you out or it's going to move to your profit objective. Stop loss management. Stop loss opens with 20 pip risk. When we are in profit 10 pips of our expected 20 pip objective, stop loss can be reduced by 10 pips. This cuts the risk in half. Worst case scenario, you get stopped out from entry at a full 20 pip stop loss. A better scenario is as you start moving towards your 20 pip objective, if you get 10 pips locked in, you can reduce your stop loss by 10 pips. So if you do see a return on your stop, you're only going to get knocked off with half of what your initial risk was. So you want to be a little bit aggressive with this lower time frame scalping model. And this is one way you can do that. When we are in profit 15 pips of our expected 20 pip objective, stop loss can be reduced to break even. That's important. And I'll read it again. <laughs> when we are in profit 15 pips of our expected 20 pip objective, Stop loss can be reduced by break even. Now, why did I add this here? Well, I can tell you when I first started practicing and doing drills on one and five minute charts with a model that was very close to this one, it offered many times 12 to 15 pips and I'd be expecting those 20 and then it would return on me and I would get stopped out with a loss. So as you move towards 10 pips in profit, the 20 pip objective that you're waiting for and your limit order to you know, take you out of the trade, you have reduced with the paragraph above stating that if you're in 10 pips profit, which is half of what you expect to make, then you reduce the stop loss by 10 pips. So that's better than taking a full stop, but there's many times where if it can see 15 pips, It'll go 15 pips, 16 pips, and fail to expand to that 20 pip threshold and limit you out. So I don't like to be in those situations where I'm that close to profit and not in a position where I can be stopped out with break even. So I don't care about winning every time. I'm caring more about managing the risk because that in itself will take care of the bottom line for you. Money management, position size calculation formula. Position size equals account equity times R percent divided by stop loss in pips. Position size is the amount of leverage your trade or trades assume. Account equity is the total amount in your trading account. R percent is the percent of risk you are willing to take on per trade. The difference between your entry price and your stop loss is the number of pips you will use to divide the result of equity times R percent. All right, in our first example of our hypothetical account equity of 10,000 US dollars, risk per trade on this model is 1% and or 10,000 times 1% 1 or 100 US dollars. Stop required for the trade is 20 pips. In micro lots, that means every 1K leverage is 10 cents per pip. Using a model like this with 20 pips as our go-to for our standard stop loss threshold, 20 pips at 10 cents equals 2 SUS dollars. $100 or 1% 1 of 10,000 divided by those same $2 equals the leverage of 50 micro lots per trade or 1% of the account equity. Always round down. In our next example, using mini lots, 10K leverage or $1 per pip, 
everything remaining the same, hypothetical $10,000 in our equity, using a 1% risk or 100 US dollars with a stop required for the model at 20 pips. 20 pips at $1 gives us 20 US dollars. That 20 US dollars divided into 100 or 1% 1 of 10,000 gives us the potential to trade with five mini lots per trade or 1% of the account equity. Again, always rounding down. And lastly, this model and the 20 pips and 1% risk does not allow us to trade with a standard lot. So it's not applicable here. If your demo account takes a loss on a trade and it is the full R% percent you assumed, drop the R% percent by 50%. And when the loss is recovered by 50%, you are permitted to return to the maximum R% percent per trade. If the reduced R% percent trade assumes a loss, reduce the R% percent by 50% until the previous trade loss is recovered by 50%. If you take a series of five winning trades in a row, drop your R% percent by 50%. You are likely to assume a loss eventually, and this will build in equity leveling and reduce the likelihood of a large drawdown. You want a smooth equity curve that slopes or stair steps higher, not erratic distribution with deep declines. Okay, folks. Start back testing. Collect multiple sample sets with this trade plan. If you are unclear about some of the process, rewatch the lessons through this price action model. I will provide sample sets, but do not rely or wait for mine. Dig into your charts and study what was provided here. Good luck.